Jason, you've been writing some strong stuff last couple days, and it does seem that there is an urgency to your reporting and an, and what you believe should be an urgency to a resolution to the Roquan Smith standoff, hold in, whatever you want to call it, one way or another. Do I interpret that correctly? Yeah, and Dan, I mean, today is just the latest exhibit of why there should be urgency and why this needs to get done quickly. You can't let this drag into next week, man. Today you have Matt Eberflus out here saying, well, Roquan was here, but he didn't practice, but he's supposed to practice, so this is not excused. And you're going to have to ask him why he's not practicing. And you're going to have to ask Ryan Poles why we're, you know, whether or not we're going to find him. And it's like, okay, well, this guy is clearly violating your rules that he needs to practice. What are you going to do about it? I, you know, I don't know, nothing. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really not good. And it's the first thing that we've seen since everything changed over back in January that has felt clownish to me, that we've, that we've reached the totality of this entire thing, that we've reached this point this morning where Matt Eberflus is kind of throwing his hands up in a way of he can't really do anything about this with a guy who is really good, really young, wants to be here. The team wants him to be here. It's just the whole thing is a mess. And there's still time if you can get this figured out, especially if the resolution is to sign him. If you have this done and you start fresh on Monday with practice in the morning, this whole thing could still just be a footnote. There is still a window here for the Bears to keep this from being this like long-standing, long-remembered debacle. How did we get here? Huh. Uh, we got here a lot of different ways, and I think that maybe some of this urgency would have helped months ago from both sides. I mean, you had Roquan Smith talking about envisioning his future with the Bears back in April and saying in his statement the other day he's been working – wanting a deal since April. And he was here for all these optional practices. Uh, he was in Lake Forest. And Ryan Poles has said, oh, this is a guy we want. This is a guy. We, he came right out and said, this is a guy. This is a thing we need to address, his contract situation. And then along the way, there have been a lot of snags. And I think while Roquan Smith is very bright and has handled a lot of things very well, acting as his own agent, Ryan Poles acknowledged this the other day, and I have had some other people around the league Way, you know, give me their thoughts on this situation. That it, there are things that hap that are said in negotiations that are true and that need to be said by one side or the other to justify what their offer is. But you, you need, you want somebody filtering that out. You want an agent filtering out when theoretically the Bears are saying, "Hey, look, I know you want Shaquille Leonard and uh, Fred Warner money, but we have very sound reasons why we." don't think that you have matched up to them. That's not something you want to hear your boss telling you. And that can, as Ryan Pohl said, that can, there's a lot of emotions involved that can result in hurt feelings and animosity. And when that goes through an agent, there's a way of the agent's job is to kind of communicate that to you in a way that doesn't make you not want to be here anymore. So I think there's a lot of things that are swirling around with that. But I think that Ryan Pohl needs to figure out whatever their best offer is. And it needs to be, sent to Roquan Smith yesterday. Do and you, if he doesn't take if he doesn't take that then trade him, but, but it cannot just last forever. Be done with this by the end of the weekend. Do you think that it, it it matters at all to other players to see what's going on with Roquan? A little. Other players in the building for sure, like I'm sure Jalen Johnson and Darnell Mooney even though they have stayed out of this are keeping an eye on it. I think there's this fixation Lawrence uh, with precedent that Ryan Poles as a young first time ever GM, not just first year here, but first time ever is very concerned with not wanting to set a precedent, not wanting to set a precedent of an agent or a player bullying him into overpaying and various other things. But I, I don't know that that's the right way to look at it. I don't know. I not this, whatever he does here with Roquan Smith, doesn't have to be a precedent for however he handles the next thing. You can go on a case by case basis and you can say, Hey, we did this with Roquan because we think this about Roquan and we're not doing it with you for this reason or that reason. I mean, that's all part of the job. And that's why I understand the, the, the heavy handed scenario of trading him to say, 
you don't come at me like this. This isn't how we do business here. This will not be rewarded. That sounds great, and there are management side people who love that idea of that iron-fisted approach. The problem is that when it, when there is a player that you don't want to lose and you really don't want to trade, and you're at a completely different point in your organization mm-hmm. and at a different point in your in your competitive window, you can go back on all of that heavy-handed stuff real fast if it's a different situation, a different position, different player, different guy, different kind of money. So I, I agree with you that there are people rooting for that. It's like, well, that's, they don't have to do that. He's under contract. This spoiled brat's got to go. Okay, all right, fine. But, that, but don't presume that that's going to inform a next time or keep somebody from trying to get their value. Trading him would also be a step back, Dan. It would be the first thing that Ryan Poles has done that I would think has will hurt his rebuild because he inherited very, very few solid pieces for the future when he took this job. And it's three to me. It's Mooney, Jalen Johnson, and Roquan Smith. Those are the things you know. They think... Our hope Justin Fields is good and Cole Komet and Eddie Jackson will turn it around and all these other things. But the guys you know for sure that are young and good and will be part of your next good team if everything goes right are Jalen Johnson, Darnell Mooney, and Roquan Smith. And Roquan Smith clearly the best of them. So I, he has to come in and he has to take a sledgehammer to a 6-11 and 11 roster with bloated salaries and uh, mortgaged draft capital and all of that. But he needed to keep these guys and trading Roquan Smith, even if you get back, let's say, a first and a third, you don't know that a first round, that your future first round pick is going to turn into what he's turned into. He's fully developed. You know what he is. We all know what Roquan Smith is. Like, that's money in the bank. You cannot, you, that's going to hurt them to send that at age 25 out the door for draft picks. Would you be surprised if they started finding Roquan? Uh, that's kind of the next domino, and it's it's really up to them, and it's very hot. Have you ever tried to read the CBA yes. as a non-attorney? <laughs> yes. It's difficult. It's difficult, and I've been reading it yesterday, my understanding, and, and not just me reading it, but checking in with people who have expertise on it. My understanding was that Roquan Smith has this bizarre loophole situation where they can't find him. And it's sort of true. They, they like. They, I, I don't want to get into all the details of this, but I think they, the team could find him under their own rules of, you know, conduct detrimental or something like that. But I don't think it's going to be a huge amount of money that's going to make a big difference to him, and especially someone like him who is very firm in his principles. Okay, I, I just feel like that's probably their next uh, gambit that they can try, and it's why I was I wasn't surprised. I was like, oh, yeah, I raised an eyebrow when I saw that he was taken off the pup list yesterday. Oh, that was for sure a counter move. That was absolutely the counter move because they did him a favor by putting him on that list as a way of saying, hey, well, let's you know, let's give this some time, let's buy time putting you on this list. We'll even have the head coach come out here and say that you have an injury which is probably technically true. Uh, you know, you probably have an injury right now that could count for a uh, reason why you couldn't practice if you if management would agree with it. I have but, 100% have a, a reason. I did four and a half miles this morning, and my ankle is stiff, so I'm on the pup list. Your ankle is stiff. There you go, Lawrence. We could put you on pup if we needed to <laughs> to be able to continue to work this out. And w- w- <laughs> once you pull the pin on trade, <laughs> trade requests, and it's like, okay, well, you know, we're not giving you that cover anymore. And so what it set up, of course, I mean, you're sitting here seeing them do this yesterday, this chess move. What it sets up is like, okay, you know, forget the fines. Like, come on out here in full view of everybody. And we all, everyone knows you're expected to practice. Let's see what you do. Let's see what, how you make this look. Now, that's, that's one way to go about things. But I feel like at the end of today, who has the power? I mean, who who flexed their muscles today? I think it was Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith has his boss, his head coach out here, kind of helpless, saying, "I, you know, this is a clear violation of my standards, but we're just going to keep coaching the guys that are practicing. Here's the next move. I I, I, th- I think I know what the next move is, Jason. And this is, if you really want to play the passive-aggressive games here, one thing polls can do is say, you want to trade? Go find a trade. We're waiting. We'll wait. Call us when you got a trade. Because without an agent, 
And there's one thing if you tell Drew Rosenhaus to do that. Yeah. You can, you can tell Drew Rosenhaus, sure, see, see what's out there. And he'll work the phones, and he can probably work the phones better than any or as well as any executive can. But if this guy wants to represent himself, say this, this is how it's done, and you, you want to get traded? Cool beans. Go find us a deal. Yeah, send Jerry Jones a DM. Right. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That, that, what's Roquan going to do? Well, I, I would imagine that he would probably start the, seeing who he could contact and say, I'm available, or maybe do it publicly. Do you expect that you'll hear from him outside of his statement? No. No, and that was another funny thing today is uh, Matt Eberflus is like, Roquan's supposed to practice. I uh, don't know why he didn't. You have to ask him. Well, where is he? Uh, it's like, I mean, okay, we will ask him. And he was asked directly, will you make Moro Khan come down here? Will you require? You can't force anybody to do anything, but will you give him the instruction that as his boss, you're telling him, yeah, you have media access, go do it. And then find him if he refuses to do that. And Matt Eberflus just kind of talked in circles, which is troubling because we just came from that. I mean, this has a little bit of a feel to me. It's not apples to apples, of course, but it has a little bit of a feel to me of what everything, everything that went back and forth with Matt Nagy and Akeem Hicks last year. And you don't want to be doing things that remind us of that. I would agree wholeheartedly. Mr. Leisure, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.